but more to um, this thing called Google Cloud Functions. I think just now Shang Yi was mentioning it about just, uh, just now, um, how Google Cloud Function is a possible compute, work, uh, compute option that we can use for our needs. Uh, but let's start off with um, a problem statement. So, uh, what's our, so we have a problem uh, in this uh, GCP uh, user group uh, where we kind of need to have that data to understand uh, what's the current growth trajectory of the uh, GCP UG group. And um, yeah, the data is available on Meetup, uh, but you know, it's just in, not in the format that is easy usable. Uh, the only data that's kind of like obvious is number of attendees attending the meetup or number of uh, people that's inside the group. But you know, uh, let's say for us, we kind of want to understand what kind of decisions uh, can help us engage the community more. Uh, yeah, th those kind of stuff. So yeah, report and uh, we, we kind of need to do some kind of like quick report and analysis once in a while. And um, ideally, we want to do this like constantly. So yeah, it's something that we can automate. So there's a few solutions. Um, so one solution is we can uh, bang out some R and Python scripts. But I, uh, you know, with uh, R and Python scripts and then uh, running it locally, um, it's not the most ideal solution, but you know, it's easy, it's quick and easy. So you can like, have the R and Python script uh, run it locally on your own computer. But the main problem with that approach is now you need to maintain that R and Python installation on your local computer. And uh, if you deal with Python, you do know about that, um, that need to create that virtual environments and stuff like that. So let's say if you are not that familiar with the Python environment, um, yeah, you might mess up your computer and all. That's solution one. Um, solution two would be having that R and Python scripts, but then modifying it such that you, know, you can dump it in, uh, into a Google Compute instance or something like that. And then you have some kind of cron uh, to run the scripts. Or even better, uh, make those uh, R or Python scripts into like, APIs which you can then uh, use to manipulate. Uh, so you maybe can have a mobile app uh, to ping it or a chat app to, um, to ping it. So uh, the cons for this is, you know, yet still uh, like someone has to kind of maintain um, those uh, compute instances, or if let's say you can use App Engine, so like you know, someone still has to maintain that. So, um, just to want to point out that you know, there's uh, some resources uh, that Google kind of provides uh, available, so we can like the possible options to use some of these resources, uh, and we can do this compute for free. But the third solution that uh, we're going to focus today would be the Google Cloud Functions. So uh, previously, Google Cloud Functions um, has the Node.js runtime, uh, but it's like version 6, and it has that for quite a while. Uh, but recently in the uh, Google Cloud Next, uh, I think if you read the release notes up here, uh, it's now made to general availability for Node.js version 6. Uh, then uh, new runtimes for, for Google Cloud Functions, uh, Node.js uh, Node version 8, as well as Python is now in beta, so now technically anybody can use. And if you are in uh, uh, use uh, Python, so now like you can possibly run all your you know uh, data analysis like you know, NumPy and Pandas probably, and try to see whether it's possible to run it here. So uh, let's go through some of the uh, solution overview of how it will look like. So um, what? Uh, would be good would be to have some kind of slash, slash command which we can uh, invoke on the fly. And then it will call a Google Cloud function to run. This Google Cloud function will hit the Meetup API, pull the data in, manipulate it, generate the graphs, and dump it back into the Slack channel where we can uh, view it immediately. So, um, yeah, hold on. Uh, let me switch over to Slack. Oh. Okay, so this is our kind of our group here. Um, before I get started, I need, to, I need to add some emojis so that you know we can differentiate the different graphs. Yeah. Okay. So, so the Slack uh, Slack slash command that, that I kind of set up 
here would be the analyze meetup. So essentially, if you run this, um, it will first kind of ping an error because like, you know, Google Cloud Functions has uh, initial cold start time. Uh, so it takes a while to kind of run it. Yeah, and then the function kind of pops up there. So basically, this is the Google Cloud uh, Meetup group for this Meetup. Um, so you see that this Meetup, uh, for this, this Meetup is kind of like started in sometime in like May or something. So that one long line is just me alone there. Uh, and then you see that um, that first initial peak is when we kind of first made it public, but there's no speakers info information there. So it's kind of like nice to have like 100 people registering without knowing what's there. And then, um, and then the rest, are, then the second uh, peak is kind of when we kind of confirm the speakers and uh, yeah, and then you hit the 400, 400 people mark here. So, um, so let me do like one more, uh, another demo. Um, let's say, let's say uh, we hit, we go to uh, Data Science SG. So it's another like uh, popular group. Okay, just need to click harder. Uh, let's see, go past meetups. Let's say you want to kind of understand, uh, let's say we want to kind of understand like how the past, uh, past meetups of other groups, how do they, uh, how, how are they doing and all. So one way is to, we, we go and go to the meetup page and like copy over their, uh, their group name and their ID, hold on. And with that command just now, uh, essentially it will ping the Meetup API and collect the information for the Data Science SG group. So yeah, different graph here. So yeah, so um, so rather than like just viewing the demo right here, um, maybe it'll be good to actually look at how the code base kind of looks like. So um, if you go to the uh, Google Cloud Functions, the uh, documentation, they give you a simple like uh, Python function, like dev main request. Um, this documentation here is the thing like from the, uh, from the GCF documentation itself, so I didn't really change much. Uh, but the, the code uh, to kind of generate it is basically here. Uh, so it's like, you know, pulling some cred uh, credentials down, and then after that, it's um, doing some uh, text splits to retrieve, uh, to retrieve the group name as well as the ID to be able to pass to the Meetup API. So, uh, but the thing about this is uh, when you run uh, these Google Cloud functions, um, like let's say if you kind of generate like images and stuff like that, so just now with the graph that you see is essentially an image. When you try to write it into Google Cloud functions, um, if you try to write, uh, write it on the, uh, uh, this current directory where this code uh, runs, uh, lives, it will say that you know, this is a only a read-only directory. So there is a special directory for you to write to. Uh, it's called slash tmp. So that's why the slash tmp is kind of here. Um, so an interesting thing about these uh, Google Cloud functions, uh, especially this Python runtime, is that um, okay, let's say, okay, like a quick question before I continue. Um, who here uses AWS Lambda? Okay, um, like Python runtime? The AWS Lambda Python runtime? No? Okay. Um, so the interesting thing about AWS Lambda Python runtime is compared to this Google Cloud Functions Python runtime is that in AWS Python uh, runtime, um, it's kind of difficult to install your Python, uh, like your NumPy library and your Pandas library. So when you try to when you try to um, 
put that as part of your requirements at TXT, you will say that you know it's unable to install those packages because underneath those packages there's C bindings and you know the it's kind of difficult for the OS that AWS provides for Lambda to kind of install it. Uh, but the nice thing about Google Cloud Functions is that you know your uh, your NumPy and your Pandas uh, library kind of works as expected. So I think that should be a map plot lib. Uh, NumPy pandas. So, if you kind of want to install these kind of libraries on AWS Lambda, what you have to do would be to spin up a Docker container with the uh, AWS OS and kind of like install it there, import the binary out, zip it, and then send to AWS S3. So, it's like so much work just to get something running. Well, why else like Google Cloud Functions just like you just put it here and somehow it managed to install it. So, that's kind of nice. Okay, let's go back to the slides. Um, so, for the uh, so just to sum it up, um, so just now how the Google uh, how the slash slash command kind of works is basically uh, you type the slash uh, slash command. Slack will essentially send a post request to Google Cloud Functions via HTTP trigger. But you know, uh, HTTP is not the only thing that can like kick off uh, the a Google Cloud function. So there are other possible triggers that's available. So HTTP is one, Google Pub Sub, Google Cloud Storage, and a whole bunch of um, Firebase. Uh, that one I'm not too sure like what exactly happening there. But for okay, let's say for Google Pub Sub and uh, Google Storage. For for Pub Sub, when you publish a message to a topic, um, that kind you can kind of like trigger the Google Cloud function from that, just like. <coughs> Pumping messages into it, so it will like kind of like run off. And for Google Cloud Storage, like uh, certain events can kind of trigger it. Let's say if you save an image into a bucket in Google Cloud Storage, you can trigger a Google Cloud function. So um, based on uh, Shang's talk just now about uh, image, what you can potentially do is you can send an image to a Google Cloud Storage bucket, and then using Google Cloud function uh, with the image magic uh, library. You can convert the image to smaller thumb, thumbnails for you to feed it into like um, multiple uh, applications and all. So there are a few ways of uh, deploying such code. So one way is if you are if you are kind of a monster and you know you don't care about all these uh, nice editors and all, you can use the inline editor that's provided. So there's no sense checking is just like a plain old text editor. You just copy and paste the code there. Uh, it still works. Uh, other ways is to do a zip upload or zip, uh, and then you zip it up, to, you put it into Google Cloud Storage, and then that gets loaded into Google Cloud Functions. But one of the newer ways is like Google, this Google Cloud Source repository. So what it does is basically you, let's say if your code uh, happens to live on GitHub, um, you can tell it to mirror it off GitHub and come into this Google Cloud source repository. And what you can do is from the, uh, so this source repository, you can say that, hey, GCF, look at this source repository. Um, master branch, deploy it whenever there's a new commit or whatever branch that uh, you want to use. So there's, there's options for you to kind of uh, to kind of uh, modify it. Yeah, so there, this kind of the work, kind of workflow. So um, for this example here, uh, I kind of did a quick example of uh, how we can do this. So using the Google Cloud Source Repository, uh, essentially what what you can have is a command line tool to basically tell uh, Google GCF to pick up the code from Google Source Repository and immediately deploy it to Google Cloud Functions. Uh, and this can be, uh, but this can be done via Google Cloud Build. So that's like Google's answer to uh, CI CD deployments. So, so let me do a quick demo here. Let's go to Cloud Functions. So 
So uh, I'll go and do a, a quick run. Um, so basically, this should return me a, a text output. So if you see the code here in the main.py, it should return test v4. Yeah, so test v4. Um, so what we want to do is like to see how this CI and CD uh, pipeline kind of works. Okay, we'll just change this to test v5. And then we'll commit it to master, and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so this basically pushes the code to GitHub. So if you check the Google source repository, it will be mirrored. But what we want to do is actually to check um, Google Cloud Builder. Where are you? Okay, Google Cloud Builder. So yeah, so this was pushed just now. That change was pushed just now. So now it's building the solution and it will be uh, deploying it to Google Cloud Functions. So how you use Google Cloud Build is essentially you define it using this thing called the cloudbuild.yaml file. Um, that will be here. So basically you can define um, a bunch of steps. Uh, it's like almost like your normal like you know, Jenkins pipeline and everything. So essentially you, you define a bunch of steps and then that will like kind of be your build pipeline, like you know, um, do some testing first, or and then okay, deploy it to a target location. So in this case, I only have one step, which is run this uh, gcloud command, uh, beta functions deploy, and uh, meetup sets. So a few uh, a few weird things where if you don't de uh, define the region, uh, it uses a default region. So if you already deployed the function somewhere and you kind of want to make sure that that function is still deployed in that same region, you kind of, you kind of have to de uh, say this. And um, this trigger HTTP also has to be used. I'm not too sure why. And also, if you don't define source here, essentially it will do a redeploy without changing the commit. So essentially, you kind of have to define region, source, and trigger if you want to use um, the Google Cloud build with Google Cloud repositories. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't need to kind of demo this because this is just to show this point. So yeah. Okay, so uh, links for all this is here. So um, the code is on my GitHub uh, Meetup stats. So that's available uh, if you want to try it, try it out and all. Um, a blog post, I, I kind of written a blog post on this. Um, so that one will kind of explain like some of the troubles, if you're able if you're to try this example, some of the troubles that you will definitely face along the way. So one of the main issues is actually the issues with uh, Google permissions when it comes to Cloud Build. So when you, when you start with Cloud Build, um, and then when you tell it, when you tell the step to like deploy these functions, to uh, deploy this code to Google Cloud Functions, it doesn't work that way. You kind of have to tell Google Cloud Build, like uh, you have to give per Google Cloud Build permission to deploy the Google Cloud function. Uh, and there's one more additional permission that you need to add uh, to be able to run the Google Cloud function. So I'm not too sure about the, the third permission at all. But yeah, the main issue with this is not about the code. It's more of the, like, the permission system. Um, so, uh, one more link, uh, I'll just make it available here, is this thing called the serverless framework. So just now I was mentioning about AWS Lambda and all. So if you are in the business of trying to like learn this serverless thing and all, uh, so the serverless framework is pretty nice. Um, I think they have one for Node.js version 6 already, so on Google Cloud platform. So you can use the serverless framework to deploy a serverless function to Google Cloud Platform version 6. So they haven't gotten the Node.js version 8 as well as Python. They haven't got it because, you know, it, just, it was just announced. 
So just um, a few thoughts um, on what's possible and what's next. So there's this thing called Google Cloud Scheduler that was kind of announced during um, Google Cloud Next. Um, so, so essentially when just now I was talking about the Google Cloud Functions, right, they didn't really have the option to trigger it via timing. And let's say if you are like, you want to run a functions via time, how do you actually do that? So previously before Google Cloud uh, Scheduler kind of existed, a possible, so, uh, a possible solution that was suggested was um, you can have your function in Google Cloud Functions, but then you need to run, a, run an app engine with a cron job. And that will kind of like fire a message or something and that will like trigger Google Cloud Functions. So essentially just to get it, Google Cloud Functions with a schedule, like you have to do so much work just to get it done. So it's kinda, it sounded kind of ridiculous. But yeah, now with Google Cloud Scheduler, maybe the whole world will be safe or something. Yeah. So, um, so a possible work that can be done with this is, you know, using Google Cloud Schedule, you can actually like schedule some like data loads, and then the data loads we can feed it into like this other Google product called Google Data Studio. Um, a really nice tool. Like if you know Tableau, Google Data Studio is like a nice alternative, or it's more like a free alternative, if you may. You can check it out if you want. Um, and one more thing, uh, I think Chang, uh, just now, I think Jay was mentioning about this thing about serverless containers. So uh, the main issues with all these like serverless uh, solutions that are provided by all the platforms like AWS, uh, Google, Microsoft, the main problem is they have a limited set of runtimes to use on. So, you know, like let's say if you want to use Go or something, like now, now you, can't, you can't do it on Google. Um, so maybe this, uh, this, when this product launch, yeah, you can like, possibly run any runtime you want. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some uh, caveats that you need to take, off, uh, take note of, but yeah. Okay, I um, think that's kind of it that I have. So yeah, I just need to mention that you know, uh, my company is kind of hiring, so if anyone's interested, uh, just visit the page or you can come, and come over and talk to me later. Yep. Thanks a ton, Riz, for that really cool talk. Uh, so guys, we've almost reached the end of the event. Uh, just a few updates before we all leave. Uh, so first, let's start off with the thanks. Um, uh, we, as part of the GC Park team, we extend a heartfelt thanks to all the speakers here today. Some of who had to come in from different geographies to actually uh, give their talks here today. So thank you so much for those really insightful talks and for sharing a lot of the tech and product updates. Uh, thanks, guys. And uh, also a special mention to engineers 